Before we start this video, a large thank you to Vincent, Daniel, Ken, Bruna, a name I cannot pronounce, thank you for your support, my man, and Lusterated for their support on Patreon. I hope you guys enjoy the video. And a special thank you to Mike Harden Games for their immense support this month on Patreon. Hello guys, and today we're going to make it so we can actually fire an arrow, and we're going to animate the bow. So, if you go into the game now and we press play, you can see we actually draw the arrow, but nothing really happens. We kind of can't let go of the arrow, nothing really disappears or shoots. So we want to make it so we can actually fire the arrow, and we're going to animate the bow. So let's animate the bow first. If you have a rigged bow, and Sinti supplies one for free, the exact same one I'm using actually, um, you can go in here onto the model, make sure you add an animator component, as I've already done. And then you want to make a controller for it, just like you would a player. So we're going to go down to create animator controller. I'm just going to call this bow object, not to be confused with the bow uh, animator overrider, which changes our movement animations. Drag it in there, and we're good to go. So I'm actually going to release this animation pack uh, for sale at the end of this, the next episode. Um, so, but if you have your own animations, you can follow along here too. Uh, if not, you can wait until the next episode, and I will actually be supplying all these. So, let's go and drag in our two-handed aim animation, our draw and fire. And again, this is just while we're holding the bow and aiming it, um, while we draw back the arrow and we fire the arrow. Let's make a parameter, only just one, of a bull. We're going to call the parameter is drawn. And we're going to make a couple transitions here real quick. We just It's very, very simple. We're going to let the animator do all the heavy lifting here. And we'll just change the parameter with the code when we fire it. So right here we can put a, an arrow from the two-handed fire back to the empty. Um, and we can make a transition from empty to two-handed aim if an arrow is drawn. We won't be aiming unless an arrow is drawn. And if an arrow is not drawn, we can go back to empty. So let's just make a condition here. There we go. False. And we can also just make an arrow from transitioning to draw um, to aim. So that's all good. Now, under the Player Combat Manager, under the Animate the Bow pseudocode, I'm just going to make a variable of type animator. I'm going to call that animator. I'm going to make that equal player weapon slot manager dot right hand slot dot get component in children animator. And this will take the bow, which is in your right hand, and because uh, you can only fire an arrow if you're two handing the bow, you can only two hand it right hand objects. And then it will get the animator component in that bow. We're actually going to rename it to bow animator. And from there, we can say bow animator dot, and we can set the bool is drawn to true, and then we can play the drawn animation. So we just say bow animator, not, not animator, whoops. And then we would say uh, dot play, and then we would type in the name of the animation. For me, it's bow underscore th underscore draw underscore 01, and that's it. Okay, now that should work fine. So if we go into the game here now, and I two-hand the bow, and I draw back, uh, as you can see, yep, there we go. We have the bow. Drawn back looks much better. So now we actually need to make it so we can fire the bow. And we play the fire animation and shoot the arrow. We instantiate the live model, etc., etc., etc. So let's move on to doing that now. Okay, in the player combat manager, once again, let's make a private void. We're going to call this function fire arrow action. And this is going to do exactly what it says. It's going to fire the arrow from the bow um, to a direction that the player is aiming. So let's make some pseudo code here first. Let's, just, let's think about what we want to do. We want to create the live arrow. Uh, that's a given. And we're going to create that at a specific location. So we're going to instantiate that, usually at a point on the bow. That's where it's going to spawn in. Um, and from there, we're going to want to give ammo velocity. So we're going to give a velocity to the arrow in the air, uh, forward, up, and down. We're going to animate the bow actually firing, so this, the draw string will release uh, after it instantiates the arrow, along with the player actually performing a fire animation. We're going to destroy the previously loaded arrow model, because remember the loaded arrow effect does not have a damage collider, it doesn't have uh, a rigid body so it can't you know fly through the air. And then we're going to actually set the live arrow's damage uh, via a damage collider script. We're actually going to give arrows their own damage collider script, uh, because they will behave a little bit differently with arrow penetration and stuff. Okay, so let's go into the scene view here in the bow, the bow weapon that you have. And uh, if you just click on the model here, you will see that this blue arrow faces forward. That's good. That means if we create a uh, transform here, I'm going to use the prop bow um, model actually. If we create a script here, say arrow instantiation location, it's going to instantiate and it's going to face the direction of that blue arrow. So that's perfect. Um, so basically, we just create that script right here, place it on there. And you can write some comment code in the script so you don't get confused as to its purpose later down the line because the script is going to be empty. Um, it's going to say this script uh, lets us know where to 
um, spawned the arrow on the bow. And like I said, since that arrow is facing forward, the uh, the arrow when it instantiates the bow will spawn facing that direction. So that's perfect. Um, okay, now we're good on that front. So let's actually start plugging in some logic here. And the first thing I'm going to do is make a variable of type arrow instantiation location, uh, the one we just made on the bow. I'm going to call it arrow instantiation location. I'm going to say arrow instantiation location equals player slot manager, weapon slot manager, dot right hand slot dot get component in children arrow instantiation location. So now we know where to spawn the live arrow. That's fantastic. So we have that now. We've created the live arrow at a spot, or we have the location to spawn the live arrow. Uh, now let's actually spawn the live arrow. So I'm actually gonna we're gonna reorganize the structure of this here. And I'm just gonna keep this here. We can put the animate the bow right here. And let's get a nice neat order of operations. Now we can do the animate the bow first. So let's let's copy this code right here. You can copy these three lines and paste them. Uh, we'll change is drawn to false, and we'll basically change the animation to fire instead of draw, and that's that's the bow animated, all done. Um, okay, now let's move on. We have a bit more to do here, so let's destroy the old loaded model. Let's player effects manager dot current range effects, and this will get rid of the old loaded arrow model that you're using to draw back the bow, the one without the rigid body, without the damage collider. This is just going to destroy that, um, so we're not having two arrows being held onto the bow when we fire that would look awkward okay so whoops did not mean to do that try to type uh, i'm going to change this to cha uh, create the live arrow spawn why can't i type create the live arrow instantiation location so this just creates the location that we spawned it at and now i'm going to make another bit of comment here i'm going to say create and fire the live arrow so let's we have to actually instantiate the live arrow so let's make a game object variable we're going to call this live arrow, and that's going to instantiate at the position of the. Uh, we're going to instantiate the player inventory manager dot current ammo dot live ammo model first, and we're going to instantiate that at the position of the arrow instantiation location uh, dot transform dot position. Looks good. Okay, and we want. Let's also add in uh, camera handler. Dot, I believe it's. Our camera pivot transform dot rotation for which direction the arrow will be rotated towards. Yes, that is correct. So this will that's where the arrow will rotate when it is spawned in. And uh, then we're going to say rigid body equals live arrow dot get component rigid body because we're going to assign rigid body to the live arrow. So we haven't done that yet. I'll do that with you guys on video. This is how we're going to edit the speed and the velocity of it. It needs its own rigid body. All right. So now under the give ammo velocity, that's just what I was I was saying just now. Um, we can actually just we can still pass this along, even though we have, don't have the rigid body yet. We'll add that after. Live arrow dot transform dot rotation. Let's do that first. We want to change the rotation as soon as it's fired. It's going to equal to quaternion dot eulier. And then we're going to say camera handler dot camera pivot transform dot eulier angles dot x. Uh, and then we're going to say our y will be the player manager. And we can reference our lock on transform here. Uh, that's just the direction that thing faces. And then we can say dot Euler angles dot y and then just zero and that's a fancy way of saying just basically we're going to make the arrow face where the camera is facing um and our player is facing so just like the spells identical to how we did the fireball spells pretty much and then we'll say rigid body dot add force um live arrow dot transfer not forward times player inventory manager dot current ammo dot forward velocity so we're signing forward force depending on the forward force of the ammo item itself and then we're gonna do the same thing with the upward force so live arrow dot transfer not up times the current ammo dot upward velocity. So this will get the arrow, you can give it some some rise to. And if you want to, we can say rigid body dot use gravity equals um, the current ammo dot use gravity. So if you don't want your arrow to you know fall over time or you want to be magical and floaty and wispy, you can just turn off gravity and have it dematerialize after a amount of time or something. Uh, and then we can say rigid body dot mass is equal to player inventory manager dot current ammo dot ammo mass. And that's that gives you a lot of uh, a lot of options to tweak your arrow speed and the dynamics of it. So lastly, we're going to say live arrow dot transform parent equals null. That's important. Make sure the arrow has no parent. We're going to destroy it in the scene um, on the next episode when we actually do some polish elements and add the zoom aim function. Uh, but for now, I digress. Let's continue. So let's let that save. Now let's go into our live arrow model. So you'll see we have an arrow and uh, that's it right now. So on the arrow itself, I'm going to add um, Let's add the rigid body and a capsule collider. 
so you want to add a capsule collider. I just turn my gizmos on because I'm not able to see this right now. Okay, there we go. Now, I uh, just tweak the radius. I'm going to put mine on, yeah, 0 0.1 to start off, we'll see. And uh, change the direction to the axis most likely, unless your arrow faces a different way than mine. Um, I'm going to crank the height so it takes up most of the arrow shaft. And then I'm going to really make the radius very tiny. Um, you can um, you can get away with even 0 0.01, honestly, I think. But that's that looks fine for now. So uh, you want to keep the head of the arrow empty because we're going to add a damage collider on that. So let's make an empty game object under the arrow called damage collider. And then let's add a capsule collider. And we're going to position that capsule collider at the head of the arrow. And this will be the place that detects uh, enemies, characters to damage, etc., etc. I need to take a sip of this tea. Hang on. Yeah, so tweak the z-axis um, until it's in the center of the arrowhead up there. Make sure you enable is a trigger. Um, that's important because our damage collider system uses on trigger entry. Okay, so next I'm going to add a script called ranged projectile damage collider. Okay, and we're going to put in our namespace, mine is SG, uh, as is per tradition. You may put in whatever you want. I'm going to make this derive from damage collider. So it's going to get all of the cool stuff our damage collider already gets, but we're going to tweak it because not in this video, but in the next video, we're going to make it so the arrow actually can penetrate a surface and stick into it. Um, so let's change this on trigger entry in our damage collider to protected virtual void so we can override that um, function on our ranged uh, projectile damage collider. We're going to use the exact same logic. We're not going to change anything in this video, but in the next video, we're going to change it a little bit and we're going to add some stuff to it. So let's just say I'm not going to use base because because we're going to modify the next video, I'm going to copy and paste the whole bit of logic in here because um, it will work very similar, but it will be a little bit different. So for that for that reason, I'm just going to not run the base function. I'm going to copy everything here, and we'll change that in the next episode. Um, so shield has been hit and has been parried, is not able to be accessed. So change that to protected. It's private right now, and then we'll be good. And we're going to make it so you can't parry an arrow, obviously. That would be really cool and kind of funny, though, but we're, we're not going to do that. We're not going to do a Valheim. Um, okay, so next we're going to add a couple of variables here just for the next video, just to set the stage. Let's make a uh, ranged ammo item, call that ammo item. And we're going to add a protected bull for has already penetrated. And that means if the arrow has already penetrated a surface um, and, and stuck into something, it can't stick into multiple surfaces. Because if you collide with an object that has multiple colliders, it's going to pick one, not stick into two. Otherwise, you get duplicate arrows. So then we're going to say protected game object. Uh, we're going to say penetrated projectile. And that's it. Now in the next video, we'll utilize those variables to set that up. Okay, back to the firing function. Back here in the player combat manager, um, down here under create and fire the live arrow, we're going to simply say ranged projectile damage collider equals live arrow dot get component and children ranged projectile damage collider. And I forgot to actually give that a name. Um, we're just going to call that damage collider. Uh, you can call it whatever you want. Again, this is just referencing the damage collider on the arrow that becomes live when the arrow has been fired. So from there, we can set our damages when the arrow is shot. So we can say damage collider dot, uh, you can do physical damage. I'm going to set the ammo item first to player inventory dot current ammo item. This will be used in the future to grab the penetrated arrow model and, and instantiate it on whatever the arrow hits. Uh, and then we'll say damage collider dot physical damage is equal to, and you can whatever you want to set it up to, player inventory manager dot current ammo dot physical damage. And if, whoa, what's, oh, it's a float. That's mis my mistake. I think I made, yes. So change this to an int, uh, not a float on the ranged ammo item. And if you guys have multiple damage types, like I said, I won't add them in. It's the exact same process. You know how to do that by now. Okay, and on the input handler, let's make a function to fire the actual arrow. So we're going to call this private void handle fire bow input because firing a bow will work a bit different than firing a crossbow. We're going to say if fire flag. Uh, then we're going to basically say if player inventory or player manager, sorry, is drawn or is holding arrow, uh, then we're going to do player combat manager uh, dot fire arrow action, and we're going to change the fire flag to false, and that's it. I think that should be all we need right now. I'm just gonna oh, I gotta make this public um, private void it should be public void fire arrow function because we're referencing that from the input handler. So. Fire arrow action. Make sure you call handle fire bow input on your tick input, or else you won't be able to do that. Now let's see if we're missing something. I'm going to test this and then jump back in. So I'm just going to save this. Okay, we were missing something. So this should be get component and children here on the rigid body because we put the rigid body under the game object of the live arrow model. 
And <clears throat> also, we forgot to animate the player. So let's make a comment here saying reset the player's holding action or holding arrow flag. And we're going to animate him here too. Uh, so we'll say player animator manager dot. Then we're going to say uh, play target animation. And the animation we're playing is the fire animation, which for me is bow underscore two hand underscore fire underscore oh one. And we're going to make that true. We are interacting. Do not want to move out of that. And next we're going to say player animator manager dot animator dot set bull. And we're going to set bull. Um, I believe it's is it is holding arrow. I always forget that is holding arrow. And we're setting that to false. That's how we're going to reset our player's locomotion when holding the bow. And now we save, and I think we should be good. Okay, no, we're not good. <laughs> Back to the damage glider. Make sure you check enable damage glider on startup under the range projectile. Make sure you check that. Okay, now we're good. But I have a problem here. So if we lock on, um, or if we fire at him, rather, we double click, we're missing something. Okay, yeah, we forgot to assign the character manager um, on our damage glider. That's us. So right here, we have a character manager variable on the base class of damage glider. So that's easy. Over on the combat player combat manager, um, when we set up our arrows damage collider, we just say damage collider dot character manager equals player manager, and that'll get rid of that error for you. And we, we're probably missing something else here, so I'm not going to say we should be good now. We'll uh, we'll see. Okay, let's save that. Okay, so we're going to the game here now. Um, it looks good, but check this out. When I lock on, you'll see that we're kind of facing upward, and that's that means the arrow would literally, it would shoot down at his feet. So we're going to make it so we change how we calculate the arrow's rotation, depending on if we're locked on or not. So let's go over here. Now we're going to say right here under um, give arrow or give ammo velocity, we're going to say if camera handler dot current lock on target does not equal null. So if we have a lock on target, we're going to rotate one way. If not, we're going to rotate the regular way, like unlock spells. Think of lock spells versus unlock spells, the same concept. So I'm going to make a comment here saying, since while locked on, we are always facing our target. This is very simple because our forward direction will always be pointing towards our target. So we can basically copy our facing direction to our arrows facing direction. So it's very, very simple. Um, this is just two lines of code, I do believe. So we're going to start off by saying quaternion. Uh, I'm going to call this arrow rotation is equal to uh, quaternion dot look rotation and we're going to say transform dot forward so we're going to look the way our character is already facing that's what the arrow is going to look at and then we're going to say live arrow dot transform dot rotation equals arrow rotation that's it so whatever way we're facing which is always at our lock on target that's the way our arrow is going to face let's try that so we're going to the game here now and i'm not locked on i'm going to draw back an arrow and see if i can shoot this guy and i th i just missed okay so we're going to get we're going to try that again and there we there we go. Yeah, that made contact. Nice, nice. Good damage. Now, if I lock on, this should catch him right in the head. Draw back the arrow. Release. Yes. <laughs> okay, that's awesome. Really cool. I hope you guys like that. In the next episode, we're going to make it so we can actually have the arrow penetrate into a character or the environment. Check this out, too. It was given arrow. Let it go there. That looks really nice. Looks great. And we're also going to add um, just some more cool things. We're going to, you know, destroy the arrow after a certain amount of time. Um, we'll polish up a little bit. And then we might also get started on our actual zoomed in aiming and the next episode as well. Most likely going to do that where we can like hold the left bumper and go into the aiming sequence and the camera changes. So if you guys did like that episode, I love this episode. Please drop a like. Don't forget, it genuinely helps out my series so much. Uh, leave a comment. That helps out even more. More interaction with the video. More people see the video. I get to make more videos. And if you feel like a super champion, check out my Patreon below. Really excited to get to the next one where we can probably conclude this. And then we can start going over and polishing some more of the combat elements. And guys, this is getting really close to a like a prototypal playable project. I'm going to really start um, winding down now and, and polishing some stuff up. And we can try to make an actual like you know gameplay loop here. So I will see you guys in the next episode.